My name is Lee McIntyre and I'm a research fellow at the Center for Philosophy and History of Science at Boston University. And after I wrote my book, The Scientific Attitude, um, I started to think about what science denial was. Because although that book had a little bit about science denial, I wanted to see what it was really like in the real world if you could convince these people, if you could talk to them, what it would take to do that. I'd been studying science denial from my desk, from my study, for 15 to 20 years. So I looked and found that the Flat Earth International Conference was coming up in Denver, Colorado. And that was my spark. I bought a ticket and I went out there and I just mingled and I kept my mouth shut the first day and just listened. And then the second day I started to talk to them. My underlying theory was based on some work by some cognitive scientists who had already established the idea that every science denier reasons in the same way. They're all uh, cherry picking evidence and they believe in conspiracy theories and engaging in illogical reasoning. They rely on fake experts and they think science has to be perfect. Which meant to me, that was a breakthrough idea when I learned it, because what that meant is that if I could learn how to talk to flat earthers, I could learn how to talk to climate deniers or anti-vaxxers who were the ones that I was really worried about. So I spent two days at the Flat Earth International Conference talking to you know, what are arguably the worst science deniers on the planet. And I found that although I didn't get anybody to you know, tear off their lanyard and say what a fool I was, I was able to engage. I was able to get them to listen to me because I listened to them. And note that the title of the book is How to Talk to a Science Denier. It's not how to convince them. And what I learned from that is that if you're calm, if you're patient, if you're respectful, and you have a certain amount of empathy with science deniers because they're victims of disinformation. Somebody, you know, they're cafeteria skeptics. They're skeptics about the thing that somebody wants them to be skeptical about. They don't just wake up one day and, whether, and wonder whether the, there's a Jewish space laser. You know, they, that's just that's something that somebody fed them as disinformation. So if you go in with that kind of little bit of empathy, uh, it really goes a long way, and um, there are chapters in, later on in the book where I talk to uh, climate deniers and where I talk to uh, anti-vaxxers, and I was writing the book when the pandemic, this was my pandemic book, I was writing it during the pandemic, and so it was really interesting for me professionally to watch a new area of science denial be born before my very eyes, and to kind of test out my theory. It was a problem to do the research because the best way to talk to somebody is face to face. Can't do that during a pandemic. So it, the research in the later part of the book wasn't face to face. You know, I, I couldn't do as much of that. So I did the best that I could. But I think that I settled the question, at least for myself, that it was actually possible to speak to science deniers, to have an engaging conversation, and that I was reading these anecdotal accounts where people were successful with this method. If you ever are gonna change somebody's mind, face-to-face -face conversation, where they trust you, that's what's going to work if anything will. Science denial, I finally learned, was not about facts, it was about trust.